We have a manifesto, we have some writings that we're going over uh, that uh, pertain to this day, the actual incident. But that's not all. Authorities found cell phones, laptops, a suicide note, three folders, and 19 journals. So why hasn't the public seen any of this? And do they really expect us to believe that they can't establish a clear motive behind Audrey Hale's actions? But there's another curious development as well. The media are usually rabid, right, about securing the release of the shooter's diaries or manifestos. But they've fallen oddly silent, oddly incurious here. Why is that? Well, the night of the shooting, the angle spoke to FBI criminal profiler about the issue. What he said stuck with us. Watch. They're going to have to release all of that, James, yes or no? The, all of that's going to have to be released to the public. Well, Laura, that's exactly where I was going. It should be released. But I have a feeling there may be some uh, DOJ uh, part participation in this. They may not want this kind of these kind of writings going out. It would destroy a bunch of a nar narratives that this present administration has. Tonight, that seems to be the only conclusion that we can reach. Metro Nashville PD told the Ingram Angle that they, along with the FBI, are still reviewing everything, and there's no timeline for its release. Joining me now, Charlie Kirk, founder and president of Turning Point USA. Charlie, what's going on here? Well, yeah, the buried lead there is that if there's a lot to review, probably, and then there's a lot that they don't want actually to be put in the public. Think of all the things that the media was enthusiastic that got leaked or was revealed in the last couple of years. The president's tax returns illegally, the president's phone calls, President Trump, not to mention the Supreme Court leak with Dobbs. But we're not allowed to see the manifesto. There's been major pushes by the media for transparency over the last couple of years, that democracy actually hangs in the balance. But we know why they don't want this to be made public, because there might be evidence that, number one, that this was a hate crime inspired by a trans ideology against Christians. Number two, there might be further evidence that this person was wrestling and struggling with this ideology, that this was not necessarily, this was something that might have outside influences might have come in, maybe TikTok or social pressure or other ideas. We don't know. I'm speculating at this point. But the more that the government is refusing to release this manifesto, it begs the bigger question, what are they trying to cover up and why? Well, isn't the Washington Post's motto, democracy dies in democracy. the darkness, right? Yeah. Uh, in the hours after the shooting, Charlie, the media was already, as you remember, downplaying the manifesto. This person had a, a so-called manifesto that maybe sounds like a kind of a glorifying word for it was probably just a screed in a, a journal. The word almost kind of legitimizes what they're doing, as if it's some sort of legitimate uh, political stance or something. It may not make sense to a lot of people, likely not. Charlie, you surprised here? Well, not surprised, but I'm, of course, disappointed. You know, if they would have found in that manifesto something about the great replacement theory or some sort of white identitarian politics, this manifesto will be made public. We know that from the Buffalo shooter. We know that from the homicidal maniac in South Carolina. We know that through a pattern of shooters where the media not only calls for the release, but they do day after day after day of headlines talking about how these ideologies are creating violence. And yet, when there's an ideology that they actually support, that is supported by the entire regime and the mainstream media and our government, they're actively involved in covering this up, which is why I'm so glad we're still talking about this, Laura, so thank you. We have to keep the pressure on. We have to keep on asking the questions. And eventually, once enough time passes and they have no more excuses, if nothing is done, House Republicans need to subpoena these documents from the FBI to make this manifesto public. It needs to be priority right up there with all the other oversight that Jim Jordan and House Republicans are doing. Yeah, well, they certainly got that 21-year-old uh, Air Force uh, guardsman. They found him pretty quick yep. off that discord. They certainly got on yeah. that fast, didn't they? Charlie, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.